iPhone 12 was released in October 2020 and after months of pushing these products to their limits, I think I'm ready to talk about them. Also, this may be a great time to buy an iPhone because iOS 14 runs perfectly, all of these devices reach their full potential and you can find some deals here and there. Long story short, as a power user, I can tell you that iPhone 12 and 12 Pro are fantastic devices and 12 Pro Max is a workhorse. But none of them are as epic as this one. This is iPhone 12 mini. Just like all other iPhone 12s, it has 5G connection, 5 nanometer A14 Bionic chip, 10-bit Dolby Vision video, Smart HDR3 photo, and IP68 liquid, not just water. Liquid resistance up to 6 meter for 30 minutes. iPhone mini is so mini that it weighs less than its box. It may be smaller than iPhone SE 2020, but the 5.4 inch Super Retina display is taller than iPhone 8 Plus and has a higher resolution. In a world where some smartphones easily have 5000 mAh batteries, this little monster only has 2227. However, iOS is so efficient that this device lasts all day and we'll be talking about the battery life a lot more in this video because the things this little monster can do is incredible. But if you need something bigger, then there's iPhone 12. It is basically iPhone 12 mini with 6.1 inch screen, better battery life and it costs only $100 more. But if you want more from your device, then you should go for iPhone 12 Pro which is made from stainless steel, has a brighter 6.1 inch screen for typical stuff, has 52 mm tele lens and a lidar sensor that takes this phone above and beyond. It takes night mode portraits, Apple Pro RAW photo, up to 4K 60 frames per second, 10 bit Dolby Vision video for video lovers. Now, if all that is enticing yet, still you want more, you may be one of us, a power user, an obsessive compulsive creator. Then what you need is this monster, iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is a beast and easily the best iPhone for a power user. 6.7 inch screen, best battery life, biggest wide angle sensor with sensor shift stabilization and a 65mm tele lens that lets you capture amazing photos. These phones have been out for 6 months and Apple have been polishing them with new iOS updates, bug fixes and features, simply making these phones better every day. So I guess the question is, are they any good? Let's begin with mini. iPhone 12 mini, considering everything, is the best iPhone 12 and probably the best iPhone ever. And I cannot believe Apple is not pushing this 
device more. There must be more advertisement, billboards to show people what iPhone 12 mini can do. While I was ordering an iPhone, if I was to order just one, I wouldn't even consider these three and I would just go for iPhone 12 Pro Max because I know I want to get the most out of a phone. I need the biggest screen. I need the best cameras. I need the best performance from an iPhone. But there are so many things this mini delivers that none of these can. It is super light, feather light. It is super fast and it is so much fun to use. The one hand use of this device is so much fun. I had no idea how much I missed it. And the thing is, there is a prejudice towards small devices. A small device means less capable for. And another real life example is when I pass this device to a friend so she can take a photo of us, her first response was, she knows that I'm into phones and technology, she said, and I call, ew, what is this old iPhone? Jokingly, but still, ew, what is this old iPhone? It's not an old iPhone, first of all, it has the wallet on it. But yeah, so there's this prejudice that needs to be, you know, cleared out. And I was using this phone as my secondary phone. But when I saw Jonathan Morrison, Peter McKinnon, Sarah Dicci, and all other content creators praise iPhone mini so much, I wanted to promote this to my main device. And oh boy, oh boy, now I cannot go back. The performance of this device is nothing shorter compared to the other iPhone 12 series. And especially in some cases, it is even better. Now the 5.4 inch screen on this device is gorgeous, but iPhone 12 mini and iPhone 12 is 625 nits, which is not as bright as iPhone 12 Pro or Pro Max. But when you switch to HDR mode, they are equally bright. And also there is a trick that I'm gonna show you right now. If you want maximum brightness out of this device, without watching something in HDR, you can just switch the auto brightness off and turn the brightness up. And this device screen is gonna get super bright. Actually, let's see. All right, now I have my light meter here and the phone is set to maximum brightness. And I, when I place this on top of it, it says 930 lux. Now let's go to our settings and turn auto brightness off and let's go back to that same white image and now it's 1100 lux now i also have an hdr video that we can watch that is set to 10000 nits and now when i place this <laughs> on top it goes up to 2050 lux. Now let's compare that to 12 Pro Max. Right now 12 Pro Max is at full brightness and we get 890 lux. Now let's go ahead and turn auto brightness off and go back to our white. 1370 lux. And let's go to our YouTube and look at our HDR video. And look at that, 1960. And if you're wondering how that compares to OnePlus 9 Pro and Samsung Note 20 Ultra, OnePlus 9 Pro reaches almost 1500 lux and Note 20 Ultra reaches 1200 lux with the same HDR video. This entire time I didn't have a screen protector on and I didn't get any scratches on my screen. I didn't drop the phone so I'm not sure how good ceramic shield is. But I also would like to tell you that I take really good care of my devices and my stuff. So I may not be a great example. But I really like and enjoy the flat screen. 
I'm so happy that Apple is not falling into that curved screen flex. No one needs it. I need to see my screen. Doesn't matter if it curves at the end or not. So this is really good. But the lack of 120 hertz is there. You see it when you're looking for it. But for me, it's not a deal breaker. After carrying iPhone 12 Pro in my pocket with its leather case and a wallet on it, switching to iPhone 12 mini was really surprising. There were a lot of times where I thought I forgot my phone somewhere else. I wasn't even able to feel this in my pocket. And being able to navigate with one hand and sipping my morning coffee or tea with the other is just priceless, seriously. Seriously, I never realized how much I missed this. This reach, actual reachability. The cameras on iPhone 12 mini and iPhone 12 are identical and they take fantastic photos. I have some really good photos shot with these devices. But the thing is, these two don't have Apple Pro RAW, which is a shame because a RAW photo stores much more inform it takes a lot more space but it stores much more information compared to a high efficiency or jpeg photo which means you can push a photo while editing a lot more because there's a lot more information in there but that's not the end of the road we have other apps that you can download that can shoot in raw actually since 2016 highlight can shoot photos in raw format this is not apple pro raw but it's the traditional raw that we know there's also another app called pro shot that i use a lot and with all of these apps you can get a really nice looking photo however for some strange reason when it comes to ultra wide angle lens um, you cannot shoot in RAW no matter what app you have on your Mini or 12. When it comes to Pro and Pro Max, you can use all of the lenses and shoot in Pro, RAW or RAW. The LiDAR sensor on the Pro series helps a lot when it comes to photos. But the computational photography has gotten so good that iPhone 12 mini and 12 doesn't fall behind. Actually, in some cases, 12 mini and 12 cuts the corners of the photo better than Pro and Pro Max. Sometimes, but it happens. LiDAR sensor really shines when it comes to night time portrait mode which is a feature we have on 12 pro and 12 pro max and i was able to get fantastic looking photos using that feature which is something we don't have on 12 and 12 mini also the lidar sensor is not only for photography you can use it for ar more accurate measurements and determining social distancing when you go to your magnification app, you can see the distance of people. When it comes to telelens with 12 mini and 12, the lack of telelens is very apparent. I mean, every time when I'm about to take a photo, I, I know I'm missing a valuable lens. And especially if you're taking a photo in portrait mode, you can only take that photo in wide angle. With Pro and Pro Max, you can use wide angle or telelens. You wanna prefer the telelens because of the compression. You would get a nicer looking portrait photo with the telelens. So if you're planning about buying an iPhone 12 mini, the sacrifice of telelens can be understandable. But if you're buying iPhone 12 and you like taking photos a lot, I would say I wouldn't sacrifice tail lens and I would go for iPhone 12 Pro. When it comes to video, all iPhone 12 series can shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second. But one incredible feature we have on these devices is the Dolby Vision support. 
with iPhone 12 mini and iPhone 12, you can shoot up to 4K 30 frames per second in Dolby Vision. And in Pro series, you can shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second. And if you don't know what Dolby Vision is, it is a high dynamic range format. It's like HDR10, but it is licensed by Dolby and you get to have a dynamic metadata while shooting videos, which gives you better looking footage. If you don't want to deal with Dolby Vision, you can simply go into your settings and turn it off. And if you accidentally shoot something in Dolby Vision, you can download the iMovie app, which is a free app that comes with these phones. And you can export that video in SDR format, which is the regular format. And the thing is with iPhones, yeah, the stock apps may not have the professional features, but you can download apps like Filmic Pro or Moments Camera app and get the professional features. You can even use this lens by Moment and shoot in anamorphic mode. Just look at all these accessories you can get to push the limits of your devices, including Mini. So if I want to shoot an anamorphic video with Mini, I can simply attach this lens here, go to my Filmic app, and here I'm ready. I'm ready to shoot an anamorphic video. Look at this. This is by Polar Pro. This is their case, and this is their handle. And this handle has a shutter button on it, which connects to your phone via Bluetooth. And you can use circular polarizer filters or a mist filter or a variable ND, a variable ND on this phone and get the cinematic footage you want to get. Think of it like a kitchen. iPhone is like a very nice kitchen. If the chef is good, the food is going to taste amazing. If the chef is sh the kitchen doesn't make much difference, does it? Now let's talk about MagSafe. These iPhones have this little magic trick behind their back with these magnets. You can connect on wireless charging and it snaps into the correct place and it charges your phone effectively. But it can also be used for other accessories like the wallet and more, like a car mount, which I love using. And I've been using it ever since it came out. And not even once that phone came off of that car mount. Also, you can use it with accessories like this. This is from Satechi and it is something I started using a lot. I put this on my desk, it has USB-C input and you plug it in and it charges your AirPods and your phone at the same time. So this is a great usage of MagSafe. And if you're thinking there can be more, you are right. Actually, Moment released a lot of accessories, MagSafe accessories, and they're fantastic and they're super strong. This is so strong that I was able to lift up my hand vacuum with it. And also Apple has a MagSafe charger and I didn't think I would be using this a lot, but I ended up using it a lot because it's very useful, especially when you're going somewhere, you only need one charger and once you're done, this thing just falls and you put it away. It doesn't take much space. It is easy to use. You can actually see how strong these MagSafe mounts are compared to the regular wallet, for example. And that's the beauty of MagSafe. The power of the magnet is adjusted according to your device. Now let's talk about battery life because this is where iPhone 12 mini can be eliminated or remain in your radar. I can tell you that as my main phone, on a typical day. This lasts all day long. I mean, by the time I go to bed, it sometimes has 10% battery remaining, sometimes 15, 
but it never ran out of battery on a day where I use this phone normally. But I also have to tell you that the battery life depends on what you do with your device. If you're playing games, it's gonna drain differently. If you're surfing the web, it's gonna drain differently. If you like to take photos, if you like to shoot videos and then edit them on your device, it's gonna drain differently. Actually, let's look at an example. I streamed a three hour video on Netflix on OnePlus 9 Pro which has 4,500 milliamp hour battery. And the battery drained from 100% to 77% after that three hour movie. Now, I did the same thing with iPhone 12 mini, and I have to remind you that it only has 2,227 milliamp hour battery compared to 4,500 milliamp hour battery. And I'd like you to go into the comments right now and tell, write down your guess. What is your guess after three hours of streaming movie? I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for you. Just tap on the screen when you come back. Double tap, if you tap it once, the video is gonna pause and then we're gonna be here forever. Double. You're back? Okay, iPhone 12 mini, after watching three hours of movie, streaming three hours of movie on Netflix, drained from 100% to 75%. This is how efficient this device is. This is how efficient these phones are. Now let's look at another example. I did this test back in November 2024 iPhone 12 review, which I didn't release. What's going to happen is we'll be exporting gigantic video files back to back to see how these devices perform, how they compare, how much they slow down when they heat up and how much battery gets drained. Let's begin with some Android phones. From left to right, we have Google Pixel 5 5G, Xperia 1 Mark II, Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G, and OnePlus 8 Pro. First, let's export 9.1 GB 4K MP4 file to 1080p using Adobe Rush. OnePlus 8 Pro finishes first, then Pixel 5, then Xperia 1 Mark II, and Note 20 Ultra. Now, let's export a 7.26 GB 4K MOV file to 1080p, a format that is not liked by Android devices. This time, however, Note 20 finishes first, then OnePlus 8 Pro, Pixel 5, and Xperia 1 Mark II. Things are getting heated up and batteries are getting drained. Next up, 2.7 GB 4K HEVC video file. By the way, this is the same 24 minute video in different formats. And Note 20 Ultra is first to finish the export, then OnePlus 8 Pro, Pixel 5 and Xperia 1 Mark II. Now, let's see if they slow down. Let's export the first file again. Interestingly, OnePlus 8 Pro, Xperia, and Pixel 5 finishes faster than their first round. However, Note 20 Ultra slows down slightly. As you can see, the results are a little messy and not very consistent, and in the end, Pixel 5 has the least drained battery. That's very interesting, isn't it? Now, let's do the same thing with iPhone 11 family. As you can see, the results are consistent and as expected iPhone SE 2020 is the slowest and it slows down the most when it heats up. Also it drained 17%. But let's not stop there. Let's push these devices a little bit more with iMovie. Let's export the MOV, MP4 and HEVC files on Apple's own movie editing app iMovie. 11, 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max are very consistent. SE 2020 is not doing bad, but still. Now, it's time for iPhone 12 family. When we look at Adobe Rush test, you can see that all results are close and consistent. And Mini, with the weakest battery, only drained 9%. Where at the same point, iPhone SE 2020 drained 17 and the Monster Note 20 drained 
Now, without waiting, let's switch to iMovie. And once again, they are head to head. And Mini, with the weakest battery amongst all 12 series, drained only 16% in the end. This shows us a couple of things. iPhone 12s are very equal, they are consistent, extremely fast, and nicely optimized. But as I said before, if you're taking photos, if you're shooting videos and then editing them, they're gonna drain differently. So in the end, up until now, this phone lasted me every day. And on a simple 25 minute car ride with a simple car charger, iPhone 12 mini was able to charge from 62% to 84%. And actually that's the thing. Yes, mini has the least battery life, but if you can charge it here and there every once in a while, you can use it like a power user and it lasts. It is an incredible device. And I believe the second someone can make a good looking, a good looking MagSafe charger for these phones, no one's gonna stop. No one can stop iPhone 12 mini. No, nothing can stop iPhone 12 mini. That's it, iPhone 12 mini is gonna pass all of these guys. So yeah, considering its price, performance, weight, cameras, face ID, 5G, iPhone 12 mini is incredible. And if you're thinking about getting one, I suggest you should get one and see if it fits your lifestyle. If it doesn't, you can return it in 15 days and get something else. But if it does, welcome to the club, my friend, welcome. So where does this leave iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro? Of course, iPhone 12 is basically iPhone 12 mini with bigger screen, heavier, but better battery life phone. And it's a little more expensive than iPhone 12 mini, but to me, it is not as exciting because once I'm going for this size of phone, I feel like I'd much rather have iPhone 12 Pro as a power user because I'm really excited about where AR is gonna go. I'm really excited to use the LiDAR sensor on this phone more and more as the applications become available. And the telelens, the 52 millimeter telelens is really nice. Also Apple Pro RAW is a fantastic feature and being able to shoot in RAW using all the lenses is something else. And these are great devices and they're gonna last a really long time. Going back to battery life, yes, these phones have better battery life with the stuff I do. These were not good enough as well. And that's when the Pro Max comes in. You can do anything with this device and the battery will last. I use this device so much. The 65 millimeter telelens is beautiful. It's beautiful. You can take incredible looking photos with this device. 6.7 inch screen is gorgeous. It's so nice to edit photos and videos or whatever you want on it, especially if you're using Lightroom for iOS. Ah, oh, it's so much fun. You just sit on your couch and start editing your photos. It is endless fun. Without a doubt, iPhone 12 Pro Max is the most capable iPhone, but it's also the most expensive. So in the end, after months of using these phones, whichever one you pick, you can't go wrong. They, they are all good. All iPhones in iPhone 12 series are really close to each other. They are really, really close to each other. It's not like the previous years. They are really nicely balanced when it comes to bang for buck equation. Well, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, what I think doesn't matter. What matters is what you think. Let me know in the comment section below what your experiences are with these phones. If you have one, if you're planning to get one, what do you think about iPhone mini? Why isn't it getting the attention it's supposed to get? What is your take on it? And please don't forget to hit subscribe and play Ding Dong Ditch with the bell next to it. And until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves and hoş çakalın.